we will say. Um, let's go one time. So we, are, we was examining name, um, traits, sine, cosine, tangent. That's where we reached last time. <clears throat> no, this was this is not that. So let's continue that little discussion we had now. The vibes, the energy. Sine, cosine, tangent. And <clears throat> we had reached a point where we discovered that the sine curve looks like this. And this here, anybody have any questions about this? This here is like zero degrees. This is 180 degrees. And this is 360 degrees. Now if we want to express this in radians, we would use a blue marker. <laughs> and it says zero. But instead of 180, you'll say pi because pi radians is 180. This is 2 pi. And in the middle here, we have 3 pi and 2, which is like 1.5 pi. And this here would be pi and pi and 2, which is 90, right? <clears throat> Why is it in the chat if you understand oh, this diagram? How long are we going? We're going until we're going until retired, man. Come on, and that's text. Damn. Favorite topic. Yeah, so so this this is the sign curve. No. Alright. Are we doing them wise? Right, so he has gone up one time. 59, we could open 59. We could live with our 59 hours. Well, you're here sliding as you're in the back of the thing. Right now, Zion enjoying himself out here. Now, in every in every question in admats, you would um in every exam in admats you're allowed to use calculator. So and I would recommend that get that you get a calculator that can do thirds that doesn't give you fractions by default. It will actually save you some questions in the multiple choice. Let me show you what I mean. How my camera is doing so clean. This is a 760p cheap webcam. <clears throat> And all of a sudden it's looking clean. I mean it had a little fuzzy thing in the corner there, but still. Anyhow, what are looking for? The calculator. Right. Zion went and raised up the volume and that is right. Ting bing 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 bing. Every time I had to reset this thing. Every time. No sign of behavior whatsoever. The reason you want a really nice calculator, not for yeah, window, is you want your answer to pop into thirds number. Let me show you what I mean. So like if I press, if I press, can I have the sign of 60 degrees? Oh, it's in radian. So let me say pi and 2. Can I have the sign of, well, 60 is really pi and 3, right? Pi and 3 radians. All right, so it's in radians. Boom. They give me the answer in third format, which is best. This is actually like a multiple choice question here. There are some questions. <laughs> there are some there are some questions and um, multiple choice questions that this uh, the ability to fake calculator to do this is great. Because some of the questions they want you to remember it offhand. There are some um what we call it by Where's the word we use by certain angles 30, 60, 45, 90 that you should know the sine, tan, and cosine of just so, just for kicks. Special acute angles. Special acute angles, boys and girls. So some of these special acute angles you should know the quotient, um, the cosine, the tan, and the sine of them just for kicks. So let me look at them. This is how we figure out the first one. Zion, Zion is laugh at the old jokes and then guess so. Such a strange kid I made. Such a strange one. Alright, so this, well, no, wherever did he get that from? 
Now, I assume this is a nice sausage triangle that flat and that it drawn perfectly. Yeah, looking good. Eh? That, that triangle looking good. Yeah, so all the people who want to get a new calculator right now, tomorrow, tomorrow I say you shouldn't get a new calculator right now. That has a point in it. But if you get any Casio, get that and watch my video. Because you're going and save some, you're going and save some time, you're going and save some vibes with that calculator. But there's no rule to only having one calculator in the exam. In fact, you could walk like about with like about five calculators. Don't do that. But you can walk with many. You can walk with two. So walk with the one you're accustomed to. And if you can get your hands on the Casio, no, don't go and just buy any Casio. It's a specific Casio. I have a video on it. You can just look it up. Kerwin Springer Best Calculator. And you would see I have the Casio and I have the Casio 5. One on five years plus or something like that. And the Casio Cut Classes. Any one of them is really good for secondary school students. All right. Um, my is that okay? Yeah, that is normal behavior. So, what we're gonna do is split down this triangle down the middle. So, boom. But we're saying that we're saying things first. We're saying things. We're saying that this is two. Right, right. No, we're not saying that. We're not saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're saying things. We're saying things. Before we put this, we're saying that this is two, this is two, and this is two. So, it's not just an isosceles. This is an equilateral triangle. Um, that's what you say, right? Equi equilateral. Equilateral. It's a long time I talk about these things, but equilateral triangle. What is the um, characteristics of an equilateral? Equilateral, all of a sudden I'm feeling kind of weird. Why that word so long? Equilateral. Zion, you can get my ease up. Bye. Yeah, what's the properties of an equilateral triangle? All the inside angles. Yeah, the Java is just putting in my calculator. In fact, by the way, these things that I'm telling you all is things that a lot of my channel is things that mm, people knew long time and didn't used to tell people. This, this calculator, calculators that can do this, the type, best type of calculator to buy, how to revise for exams, all the different techniques. These are things that people used to pay me good money to teach their student privately, one on one. These are things that students who top it in prestige school and thing used to know and just keep it to themselves. All the past paper collection and all kind of thing that I just make wide and free available on the student hub. These are things that used to just be in a certain sect of the community, the student community. And I'm just saying everybody should get the same equal equilateral opportunities, right? And you know, right now we're talking about rights and things in the community. This channel is for the people. All people. You understand? Right. Now we that's a, that's a little plug me. So equilateral triangle, all sides and angles are equal. And since all angles are equal and all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, you could assume that this is 60. 60. Not assume, you could conclude that all the angles here are 60 degrees. So let me put that in special colors because we have colors. A bread van passing on. 60 degrees. 60 degrees. Um, instead of writing 60. Uh, instead of writing 60 degrees, I can write pi and 3, right? Because I want to split it into two and just use one side to represent stuff. People buying the maths book. Um, by the way, if you're here and you're one of those who bought the maths book in the very first, like, day or two, go back and decide and re-download it. There was one letter off on number seven in the answer sheet in um, algebra section. I think it was B and it's supposed to be A. I switched it. And it's okay. If you buy it already, you can always re-download it again. So, just a shout out to those who get it already. Um... I'm going to pull it down now. We're ready to perform. Now, if I pull this down, this is not 60 anymore. This is actually 30 and 30. But remember this side, you want to call this side like the arm. Um, this is pi and 6. That is 30 degrees. 180 divided by 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 180 divided by 6 is 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees and this is pi and 6 radians. <clears throat> the symbol for radians is like that. But, mm, but I do that. 
this here is obviously 90 degrees because I pull it down the middle. But if this is 90 degrees, 90 and 90, right? If these if these angles are 90 degrees, and I split this this in this in two, this gets split in two. I can say that this here is one, and this here is one. <clears throat> now this is the triangle that we use to find special angles. So like you can get you you used to get questions on this like in paper two and show this and prove this and that kind of thing. But in paper one, you're you're not gonna do paper one. Just understanding the idea of this is good enough. So, um, what does this prove? It proves now by using Sokatoa. We can find the sine of 30 and the sine of 60. So, like I can say, the sine of 60 degrees is opposite. Hey, we didn't find what the opposite side is. That's okay. We have Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem says that hypotenuse squares is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. So in other words, before we do that, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c squared is actually 2 squared is equal to, let me call a the 1 that we see in there, plus b squared. <clears throat> 4 take away 1. Because 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, bring it across, 4 take away 1 is equal to b squared. Right? 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 So that is now 3 is equal to b squared. Why is any chat if you're understanding this? b is equal to the square root of 3. So in other words, this side is the square root of 3. We just use Pythagoras theorem to figure out that. So now we can find out what the sine of 60 degrees is without using a calculator. The sine of 60 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So square root of 3 over 2. And the cos of 60 degrees is the adjacent, which is 1 over 2. And we could also, 60 is what I said, right? And by the way, this is the same thing as saying sine of pi on 3. This is the same thing as saying cos of pi on 3. Good, good, good. We see them wise. Now, besides you, we're uh... Yeah, just stop to read the comments there. All right, so cos of 60 degrees is equal to a half. Cos of pi and 3 is this. Um, let's look at like sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is this angle here. So sine of 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So you get getting kind of opposite, opposite, opposite plane off here. And the sine of 30 degrees is going to be the half. That making sense? So this is where we can deduce these things from simply. This is like understanding where we get these suits. Now, if you put it in it, once again, if you put it in your calculator, cos of 60 degrees, if you have a nice sweet calculator, and you just write cos of 60 degrees, you're still in radians. Let me change the degrees just, just for kicks. Degrees. Sine of 30 degrees, cos of 30 degrees, We'll get the same three and two, and cos of cos of sixty degrees. We'll get a half, right? <clears throat> That's great. So there's one more triangle to investigate. There's one more triangle to investigate, and then we continue. We just going and going and going and going. Maybe like when I see real little bit of people, I might stop. So it's how long like it's how long like it stand um how long can you stand the the admats all right let me assume that this triangle was like a right angle triangle it didn't look into right and I know I can do better than this let me do better cut boom Zap, zap. The same thing happen. All right, all right, all right. I need to find a dot here to indicate where I want to go. All right, there. Zap, zap. <coughs> Boom. So we assume that this triangle was born out of a square. One, 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 one. So like this side is one. 
this side is 1, this is a right angle there. This would be 45 degrees, right? Or you could also, instead of 45, you could see pi and 4. Pi and 4 is the same as 180 divided by 4, 45 degrees, right? How, how long are you going to go up to? Chat, tell me. Are you going to do it all night? All evening, yeah? And now we can simply, very quickly, get the sine of 45 is equal to 1 over... Hey, we still need to get you up here, bro. We didn't get the um, hypotenuse. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So C squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared equal to 2. C squared is equal to 2. C is equal to the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 here. All right, so sine is 1 over the square root of 2. Cos of 45 is 1 over the square root of 2. Um, ting, 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 and that's that. No, oh, I forgot how tan anybody say tan with tan be. With the tan. Is where you leave tan on the dancer. So as well, we can say like the tan of the tan of 60 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So square root of 3 over 1. And like the tan of 30 degrees is um, um what? 1 over square root of 3. And that's that. That's that. Why is it in the chat if you understand? Similarly, the tan of 45 is 1. Let's talk a little bit about the quadrants. Let's get some understanding into the quadrant life. We mentioned it, uh, um, yes, today or day before, whenever we are doing, whenever we are starting up this. Like if I have an angle here in the quadrant, right? Um, let me put a little dot here, and I have an angle in the quadrant. Boom! This angle here would, would form this triangle. Would form this triangle, and I'd see like, let me see this angle here, alpha. Um. The tan of alpha would be the opposite over the adjacent. So let me say like this was, let me just say A and this was B. Because we don't want to really, we, we're not out here for no figures. A over B. Now it's that. But if this angle was over here like this, so this same triangle, right, in this side of the quadrant, and the angle actually going this whole way. We can assume that we can use this angle instead, right? Now pay attention to this. This is very clever. This is big brain time. <laughs> very big brain time. So um, this across here is negative B. Are you with me? Are you with me, Anna? Because it's going negative. Pointing this way, right? You can assume like it, the, the magnitude and the direction of that line is going like this way. It's a little negative. And this over here is A. So, if I want to find the tan of, and I don't want to put alpha now, I want to put, I want to put, watch the angle that I'm making in blue. This angle here, tan of theta. I would say like the tan of theta, instead of saying A over B, I would say, a over negative b, which is like the same as negative a over b. Earlier, this is the same technique that they use right through. And you get all angles positive here, sine positive here, um, tan positive here, cos positive on the fourth quadrant. This is the... Alright. Be that nice here, then so. Um, okay. Take care, get the block there. Now you get some wise in the chat if that making sense to you. Let me just do one more and try a different thing. So let me say the angle was all the way across here. All the way across here, right? And since I don't know how to join a point, I'll just finish that with a little thing. So what? Wow. Right. And the angle I'm going to put in the next color because you know we like colors in this live stream. 
And I see the angle is this big thing going around here. Now, what we always do is we always find from the basic angle point of view this um this angle here, alpha. That that's the same guy down here, alpha. But the real angle we're trying to find is this big gunta out here. Let's call him theta again. Let's call him theta two. Just 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 because we're feeling the point of that, right? Um this angle here. Let's say we're finding the sine of that angle, sine of theta 2. Now, this is the same B. The B is here. It's positive. But the A this time is negative because the A going down. So, this is a B sine of... Uh, let's, this will have to be C. Now, we, we didn't really introduce C. We didn't really introduce the hypotenuse because we was doing tan. But the, the, the hypotenuse, we'll just call that C for now. And the hypotenuse, people, is always positive. Why is the hypotenuse always positive? We always say the hypotenuse is positive because it's the sum of the square of the other two sides. When you square the square of the other two sides, you get positive. So the hypotenuse, we always take that magnitude to be positive, right? So sine sine of theta on uh, sine of theta 2 would be the opposite over the hypotenuse so it will be negative a over c what does that tell you if you try to do it for all the different trigonometric ratios you will discover that any angle in the first quadrant the sine tan cosine of any angle in the first quadrant is positive only the sine of an angle in the second quadrant is positive Simply because you'll be getting the opposite over the hypotenuse, which both are positive. But tan and cosine have the adjacent in them. So you get negative. Only tan is positive here. And it's a strange reason. It's because the A and the B will be negative. So negative over negative turns it back positive. Remember the tan is adjacent. Adjacent over opposite, right? Adjacent over opposite. So tan is positive here, and cos is the one that's positive there. You can go and check it out right here. Somebody is spamming. Somebody is spamming. All right, good job, fellas. Some kind of weird things spamming here. So, yeah, what going on, what going on? So let's try and attempt a little question, okay, now wait. Ding, 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 should we jump into a question? Any questions regarding this? So, a question you can get in like the, in like in paper two. You have sine of theta is equal to three on five. If I touch in identities, um, yeah, all school teachers class is what is used for this. All school teachers class. And if they ask you to find cos of theta, no calculator. No cap. No calculator. So at least you had to show the working. What you'll do is not panic. First thing, not panic. You just drop your little triangle one time, whap, whap, whap. You put your theta here like a box. You realize that this over here will be 3 and this will be 5. Opposite over, opposite over hypotenuse. And you find the missing, you find the missing link there. Now it don't want to put 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever, you need to actually find it. So 5 squared is supposed to be equal to 3 squared plus the missing link. Let me call that b squared. You'll discover that b squared will be equal to 25. Take away 9, 4, right? Or 3, 4, 5 triangle. Yeah, yeah. So 3, 4, 5 triangle. Put the 4 there. So therefore, you know b squared is equal to 16. Sorry, so square root of 16. So da 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 da. So now we can just jump down on the cos theta. 
and see cos theta will have to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5, and tan theta will have to be 2 over, opposite over, so 3 over 4. Simple as that. Easy thing. Easy thing. Nice, 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 nice. So, let me go into not so easy thing. Now, the, the tricks for admats give students a lot of problems, but it's, they really don't do, do that much, eh? like compared to pure maths. Once you start to catch it, you start to catch it. Um, should we touch on that identities? I mentioned that. Anybody have any questions? Sorry for sounding dumb. Your, your question is something dumb at first glance. But how is sine 90 equal to 1? The sine of 90 is 1. If hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, as it would mean opposite of y, hypotenuse in that band. Tyreek says to slow down. The sine of 90 is 1, but the other thing you're asking not related to the sine of 90 being 1. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I can show it up. Um, Omri, easy my brother, easy my brother. So, sine 90 is 1, that, that has nothing to do with, that's like a special case, you, you, you can't really consider the triangle involved there. Because, remember this is the angle that you're considering, right? This angle could, could be acute all the way up to approaching 90 degrees. As the angle approaches 90 degrees and reaches 90 degrees, it's like this is like the opposite is the same as the hypotenuse. Basically the same in size. So the sine of 90 degrees is 1. Alright. So what is an identity? <laughs> Let's talk about the biggest boy in identities. The biggest boy in identities. Now, what's the major identities are there? Yes. Yes. Well done. Well done, Annie. Mikhail Morris. You so like if they ask it to find the tan of 120, okay. Like if they ask it to find the tan of 120, right? No calculator again. You need to see that the tan of 120, you know, you're, you're, you're linking them up on your quadrants, you're dropping down on 120 on them. Day. So that looks like 120 degrees. So what will be remaining? 60 degrees, right? That's your, that's your alpha. That's your basic angle. So you know from your expert decoding skills, what the tan of 60 is, right? Tan of 60 degrees, let's go back. Remember that the tan of 60 degrees is square root of 3 and 1. So, um, so, where are we? So, square root of 3. So, right. So, the tan of 60 is equal to the square root of 3. So, now you have, now you can actually go and draw your um, assumed stuff. But once you have tan of 60 square root of 3, this is A S T C. So, you know that this angle here, tan only sign can be positive here. So, the tan of 120 is just a negative version of that. In other words, the tan of 120 must be equal to negative square root of 3. Yes, Jared. So the big boy, the biggest, the biggest one is sine squared. And I tried to touch on this in the maths a little bit very cheekily. Cheekily. This actually came like a year ago in maths exam. You had to actually prove this, which is an ad maths thing. That was the time everybody was complaining about the exam. So how do you prove this? Proof for this is well, one of the proofs for this 
is this. Let's say we have as a convention ring x and y, x y r. Is it that x y r x y r x y r ring? So x y r, and we can drop a little angle here if we want, right? Theta. And we say the sine of theta is opposite over thing, so y over r. Cos of theta is x over r adjacent. Why is any chapter very good with that? We also want to ask, um, remember our good friend Pythagoras theorem, which shows up in all kind of different areas of mathematics. So let's push this down and train Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem says r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Good. Now it's these these three things that you use to prove that that um that you use for proof for this. Right? So now you, you come out, you jump out on them and you say, okay, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now we see what will happen if we square this and we square this number, number does. So sine squared plus cos squared, okay, sine squared is y over r all to be squared, and cos squared theta is x over r all to be squared. This is the same as, um, this is the same as y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. This is the same as y, let me put the x first now, out here, x plus y squared over r squared. Right? Both of them have the same denominator, so we just play here. This is the end of the line. You know why this is the end of the line? Because according to Pythagoras term, and it was supposed to be reasoned there, according to Pythagoras term, r squared is the same as x squared plus y squared. So you can substitute this x squared plus y squared and say instead of saying that, you can drop down r squared over r squared. And what is r squared over r squared? 1. But what is 1? 1 is the same as this sine squared plus cos squared. So that's how we get this this major identity here. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Why is in the chat if you, if you know that, if you understand that, vibes, ting, 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 pow, pow, pow. So starting from, starting from tomorrow, we should be on the multiple choice game in admats. I just wanted to talk talk a little bit about this basically because people ask me on Instagram so you can talk a little bit about um, trigonometry is getting stress. The idea in trigonometry is to understand this, your quadrants, your graphs, and your triangles. And is you're trying to understand the relationship between all of them. There's one more to train here. There's like the written stuff, your identities and thing. Like a double angle formula, that kind of business. So once you could understand how all of these things tie into one, you could begin to want to have a better way, store it properly in your brain. Instead of feeling like there's one big abstract topic. Nice, nice, nice. So once again, I'm going to put, in, put out a lot of work to get the multiple choice game on for admats. I don't know if I'll be able to do a book for you all like in admats because that take real time for months. But we'll see. Um, by tomorrow, I will have the maths book available. For those who do have the Navi credit card, I'm only able to get it on paper. Not a little bit of people buy it, eh? but for those of you who want it and can't get it because you know credit card thing holding your back, paper will put in um, the bank transfer option. It should be ready by tomorrow afternoon. You all will see me make the post on that. All right. So will we get close and anything like that? No. From what I've seen, you all don't really get close in advance. But it's a good thing to know. You have advance vector videos coming soon in here. So let me, t let me do a talk. What, what topic do you all want me to do for multiple choice for advance? What topics do you all want me to do for multiple choice for advance? By the way, this is like 30% of tricks. There's a video I did on the entire trigonometry for admats. You all can vibe that. What?
topic you all want me to do in AdMats tomorrow for multiple trucks. How does multiple trucks look for AdMats? It's a little easier in my opinion. Uh, it's not easier, it's, it's, it's harder than maths in terms of it's deeper work, it's deeper mathematics, but it's easier in that maths could cover a wide range of topics. Like if I was to do a question bank book for ad maths, it should very likely have less questions. There are less styles, different types of questions that will come. But, I mean, it's ad maths, right? It's called ad maths for a reason. So people saying suits, logs, differentiation, trig identities, logs, differentiation, suits, please. Suits, all right, let me just take the vote now. Suits is twice, logs is three times, differentiation and integration is a lot of times, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we'll start off with differentiation and integration. So I'll start off tomorrow and I'll give you all the different styles of differentiation and integration questions that can come for exams. Mm, I don't know now because I have some work to do for my online maths class. How many say sequence? So tomorrow now. So I can stop. Stop now. Stop now. Statistics does come from multiple choice. Not that I've seen in any major way. Um, I haven't really seen that. So we're doing calculus, right? Calculus. Calculus. So when I see me roll out tomorrow with questions in calculus, remember that sweat and blood went in tonight to run up them questions for them and type it out. So bring your crew. Remember the ad maths crew is like half the maths crew, more like one third the maths crew. So make sure you're here. Make sure you're keeping my company and I'm not teaching. Where's my brother's name? Jared. <laughs> Jared. Jared and Ken and Guevara. Um, alone. And somebody please try and beat Jared and me on it tomorrow. Hmm. We should do a long session before exam. We do this on that we do this these things on this channel. We do these I know somebody new around here, but we do these things. We do eight hours, we do four hours, we do six hours, we do these things out here before exam is get heated. We still have a month and a half. Kinematics. So kinematics and stats had already seen that on the multiple choice. I don't think there's any change in the, in the, in the um, syllabus. So I'm thinking that that still would not come. All right, people. Um, tomorrow, differentiation. What is love? Javish, you're beating him? All right. Five o'clock. I try to make it five o'clock sharp. These days, all kind of thing happening. I, I, I don't make a little bank spin tomorrow, so hopefully, hopefully five sharp. 